But about 15 years ago, it started to really, really concern me that here in the richest, most sophisticated, most technically advanced and dependent society on the planet, we have a dramatically, and to this day even since then, a very dramatically declining interest, particularly by women and minorities, in science and technology. And while I looked at what everybody's doing about it, because this is not like a subtlety, governments worry about it, teachers worry about it, parents worry about it, giant corporations that are worried about their next generation, everybody worries about it. But they all assume it's an education problem. Let's fix the schools where we spend 700 billion a year. Let's change this, Let's, it's more supply, you know, it's more standards, more tests, more this, more that, more that. In this land of plenty, I don't think so. And remember, I'm an inventor. That means I look at the same problem everybody else looks at and see it differently. I said, let's take the bold assumption that we don't have an education problem in this country, we have a culture problem. It's not that, and we don't have a supply problem, we have a demand problem or a lack of it. The issue to me seemed like the reason this country is dramatically declining in the ability to create world-class scientists, engineers, and inventors, and almost no women and minorities participate in those strive to even be part of that career base. It has to be because what our, what our culture tells them. It's not what we don't have enough of, money, tests, stand. It's what we have too much of. A culture where every role model comes from the world of Hollywood, or the NBA or the NFL. You can ask any kid, particularly in the inner city schools in this country, they can't tell you the name of a famous living scientist or engineer inventor. How could they? You don't see them on the news, they don't see them on the billboards. So I thought, while everybody else is worried about it's an education problem and it's about supply, we should form an organization that changes kids' attitudes about science and technology and engineering. We should form a not-for-profit that will so compellingly show kids how exciting it is and how accessible it is and how rewarding it is to be able to think about problems and reduce the solutions to reality to make the world a better place and to enrich themselves. I mean, that's a much more realistic way to go forward than imagine you're gonna bounce your way into the NBA. I go into these inner city schools and point out to these kids that there are more people winning state lotteries every year than the number of people that'll ever make a nickel playing sports. The great American lie is not just that we have this obsession with our pastimes, it is depriving huge sectors of our kids from even having a shot at real careers. It's unsustainable. Last year in the United States, in the 20 largest cities, the 20 largest school districts in the United States last year graduated less than 50% of the kids due to graduate. This country is unwinding itself in a globally, intensively competitive environment that is in desperate need of great new solutions to energy issues and food issues and health issues. We sit around, we're not fiddling while Rome is burning, we're bouncing and dancing. So, make an organization that will leverage the obsession we have with sports, turn science and engineering into a sport. Well, the only way that works, that'll ever get kids' attention if they could see young, enthusiastic, world-class people doing it. You don't see kids playing cricket in the United States because there's no NFL or NBA of cricket. So there's no college cricket, there's no high school cricket, there's no junior varsity cricket. Well, if you try to show them science is cool without world-class young people that do it for a living, it's called a science fair. You look at my plastic paramecium on the folding bridge table in the basement of the middle school, and I'll look at yours, then we'll both go home and watch the Super Bowl, this million dollar minute production. And we'll bounce away four hours a day thinking I'll be the next Shaquille O'Neal. Where do women, where do young, kids that don't happen to have professional parents ever get a clue of what their real options are. So I needed to instantly find young, enthusiastic scientists and engineers to put in front of kids. The teachers can't be the ones that inspire them. It's not the gym teacher that makes these kids work out all summer. The schools are for supply. Demand comes from our culture. We get what we celebrate, and we're celebrating the wrong things. So, so.